Sorry to interrupt your classic viewing, but here is Jeff Davis. What is it? Legendary Jeff Davis show. And what should they do? Well, Subscribe to. I got to make my proper Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Legendary Jeff Davis show, baby. From Central Texas, USA. Best in the world for 30 years. And you're watching some 25 We're watching year Mike old. Mike Hanson archives here on Facebook. Now, Mike, tell us about your. Okay, day. well, that's. You don't want to interrupt. Let's go right back to Jeff Davis. All right, this is Jeff So I say this to the militias and all others who believe that the greatest threat to freedom comes from the government. If you appropriate our sacred symbols for paranoid purposes and compare yourselves to colonial militias who fought for the democracy you now rail against, you are wrong. How dare you call yourselves patriots and heroes? If you say the government is in a conspiracy to take your freedom away, you are just plain wrong. There is no freedom. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is a very real prospect of a new world order. The new world order does not mean surrendering our national sovereignty or forfeiting our interests. That America's central bank operates in the public interest. The truth is that the Federal Reserve is a private bank owned by private stockholders and run purely for their private profit. Any doubt whether the Federal Reserve is a part of the U.S. government, check your local telephone book. In most cities, it is not listed in the blue government pages. It is listed in the business white pages right next to Federal Express, another private company. But more directly, U.S. courts have ruled time and time again that the Fed is a private corporation. Today, we're all going to learn a new term. It's only two words. Now listen closely. Can all of you say constructive fraud? Constructive fraud! Did you ever get the feeling as you're staring at the ceiling that this game of life play ain't fair? Seems as fast as we can make it. There's a hand that grabs and takes it till they find us in a grave somewhere. Like a rodent on a treadmill, we keep pushing for it uphill, but we never seem to get too far. Well, if you think you're being taken, then you're ready to awaken to the truth of what we really are. We're all indentured, servitude old slaves, overburdened and bewildered feudal knaves, who have lost our soul posterity through ignorance and apathy, and now we're being taxed out of our grave. Yeah. 
were telling us they hated war, they made a deal behind our back. They said the bankers could enslave us for a portion of our wages, and today we call it income tax. But what they failed to tell us was the way they planned to sell us into statutory slavery. Now it's called constructive fraud. Some even claim the wrath of God. I call it social insecurity. Let's stop being indentured. Servitude of slaves. Overburdened and bewildered feudal names. And reclaim our lost posterity. Rise up and proclaim liberty. It's high time we rock the boat and make some way. Hanson, your good Facebook buddy and YouTube buddy. Here's Jeff Davis, my great friend. We're not social distancing. See, we're in 2020 now. Tell me about 1995. 1995? <laughs> well, that's what we're watching right now, Jeff. <laughs> you caught me off guard with that. <laughs> I don't know anything of what's going on in 19... Oh, <laughs> about one. how the technology is yeah. going to bring world peace. Let's and... get in the shade here. That's Come true. Back. Yeah, we were, this fella and myself were in the town of Lawson TV studios in Austin, Texas, public access, about 1995, 1997, 98, And I said to Mike Hansen, we were in the control room, and I said to him, I said, Mike, you know, I don't know that, I don't know anything about this internet too much of what people are talking about, but if it turns out to be anything like people are talking about, it could bring it could bring world peace and liberty. And guess what, folks? On this date, 6 June 2020, we're heading into world peace and liberty. We hope so. No, that's 100% guaranteed. Jeff Davis Show, official prediction. And as you know, Mike, Jeff Davis Show has been deadly accurate on predictions. Great Collins, Orwellian police states, Fed bank fleecing. But this prediction, Jeff Davis Show prediction, is going to bring the greatest world peace and prosperity in the history of the world. That's it. Well, don't tell those protesters because I actually told them, live and let live yesterday and almost got beat up. Those protesters, those people out there at them rallies, just keep on going, baby, because we're marching our way right into a a better place in this world. We hope so. Uh, well, I, Jeff Davis show knows so. So just keep marching away and keep just keep going and going with love and peace. And before you know it, we're gonna have heaven on earth. We're gonna get right back That's to it, baby. Peace. We're gonna take you back to 1996, <laughs> folks. We'll see you later. Peace, baby. God bless you. That's it. We are back. Is that the right camera? Which one are we in here? Anyway, folks, we're back here today. And we're going to be, we've got a lot of things to talk about here. Number one, number one, we've got, um, we've got coming up later in the program some exclusive footage from a press conference that uh, was in uh, Alpine, Texas last uh, Friday, I believe. Yeah, Thursday or Friday. Thursday. And uh, it involved uh, Howard Miller, who was a guest on this show, Gene Ritter, who was a guest on this show last week. And it was concerning the trial of uh, the ambassador of the Republic of Texas, Rick McLaren. Now, this is exclusive footage of the total news conference. This is not just a little uh, 30 to 40, 50 second uh, piece that you might have seen on the national news. Uh, you know, where they're feeding you what they want to feed you. This is actually uh, much of the comments that were made concerning the event and uh, what is perceived to be in the Patriot Network as a kangaroo court operation. So that's coming up here in just a few minutes. 
uh, probably let's say what 10 minutes or so something like 10 10 15 minutes now what's the couple things I want to talk about first off folks let me just mention this I'm assuming this is nonprofit right this uh, how's the homeless thing okay I was asked to do this so I'm gonna do it and I don't know that much about it yeah, I, this was sent to our P.O. box. It's just a public service announcement. Okay. okay. All right, here we go. Public service announcement. Can't put the number up there. Okay. All right, can we get a close-up of this, or is that out of the question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is, uh, your presence is requested at the house, at the house, the homeless. It's a town, Lake Memorial, remembrance of the homeless men and women who have died on the streets of Austin. And uh, this is uh, se uh, se November 23rd, 1997. That's good enough right there, I guess. This was uh, requested to be, uh, this was actually sent to our PO box that we're and that's coming up on November 23rd, 1997. It's basically a uh, uh, remembrance of the kind of a get together of the homeless men and women who have died on the street of Austin. Now we have a, a quote, folks, that ties into this. I don't know where if we're ready with it or not, but we have a we have a quote. Okay, we'll come back to this in just a minute. A couple things I want to talk about here first. Now this is something that was uh, since we got the close ups rolling here. This was something I've been hearing about here for the last. Uh, three four months and I now have a copy of House Bill this is a state bill a House Bill uh, House Bill 2901 can we get a quick uh, yeah, hold it up. it's it's called uh, relating to paramilitary training organizations slash providing a criminal penalty and this is uh, this is coming to us from that loving uh, state operation. Okay, let's get a close-up of that here. Uh, it's House Bill 2901. Right there is a copy of it. The, I don't know if you all can see it or not. I'm hoping. Can you zoom in real close with that? Okay, there's a copy of House Bill 2901. And I'm going to read to you folks uh, some of the uh, operations going on here within this uh, corporate de facto government. Uh, keep in mind, folks, that the Second Amendment was quite clear in its reason for why the American people needed to uh, uh, have uh, firearms. It wasn't for duck hunting, and it wasn't for uh, can blanking, as Hillary Clinton would have you say when they try to push for gun legislation uh, that... Uh, Though I'm going to tie this also into uh, into some efforts that uh, that uh, Mr. Clinton is pushing for right now with some gun legislation. But I want to just uh, first show you this bill. This is H, a state bill, House Bill number 2901. 2901. Apparently, uh, this this uh, legislation was uh, took effect on September 1st of 1997. And uh, but anyway, some of the particulars to this uh, how this state bill that Pat, that uh, took effect here just a couple of months back. Uh, number one uh, subsection talks about civil disorder, which means a public disturbance involving an act of violence by a group of three or more persons. Now that all, that almost sounds you know fairly legitimate. You know they're, they're, if you go out and uh, destroy something, then you should be punished. However, when you read the face of this bill, when you continue to read uh, the contents of the bill, it goes on to say basically uh, in subsection three here, it defines a paramilitary organization, and this is this is actually now considered criminal according to this uh, this uh, bill that took effect. Paramilitary organization means a group of three or more persons organized on a military pattern who possess firearms or explosive weapons. So essentially what that's saying, folks, 
If you are uh, in a group, if you're over at somebody's house, a friend's house, and uh, there's three or more of you there, and you happen to possess a firearm, according to this, uh, this new bill that uh, took effect, you are breaking the corporate de facto uh, laws. Paramilitary organization means a group of three or more persons organized on a military pattern who possess firearms. That's, the same, that's exactly what that's saying, folks. No, no, other, no other doubt about it. That's, that's, this is what this means here. So in other words, if you're out with two of your kids, let's say you're an older, older person and you're out with uh, two of your teenagers, uh, essentially, technically, by this bill here, uh, you can uh, you can be uh, you're subject to this, this 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 tyrannical law here. And then in subsection 4b, and it says to train in the use of or teach the use of firearms to others for the purpose of committing an offense. Now this is uh, this is kind of vague here. Now of course if it if it means you know we we my my position is basically you're you know as long as you don't uh, impose that right upon somebody else you can basically have any type of gun or weapon or, or anything you want uh, but if you continue to read this uh, basically it's if, if you teach or demonstrate to another to use apply or uh, or making of a firearm or technique capable of causing injury or death if the person knows has reasons to know or intends that firearm to be used as a technique to be caused to cause civil disorder or meets with two or more persons as a paramilitary organization to train with, practice, or be instructed in the use of a firearm. And it just goes on. Basically what it's saying here, folks, uh, the gist of this H -H 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 -B, uh, 2901, which is a state bill, was that uh, basically it completely over, oversees the U, the U.S. Constitution and the Texas Bill of Rights, which which allows us the authority, of course, to uh, to uh, maintain uh, firearms. Um, so this is a, another blatant attack on the Second Amendment uh, of the U.S. Constitution. So basically, folks, just keep that in mind now. Technically, by the by, this law here, if you uh, are meeting with a, a group of three or more people and you happen to possess a firearm, by uh, definition of this House bill here, you are essentially a criminal. It can be it, it can be uh, foreseen as such, which I think is very interesting. Now, there's also some other piece of legislation coming down from the feds. It's actually not legislation yet, but it's the conditioning uh, uh, is uh, underway for it. And we're going to be talking about gradualism here in just a little bit and how the American people, through gradualism, have been in shock treatment and shock therapy, have been uh, uh, conditioned to believe what the things that are going on around us are acceptable. And we're going to be talking about that here in just a little bit. Some of the things that uh, Mr. Clinton uh, is trying to uh, get through the Congress and whatnot. Is he first off? He's calling for total uh, disbandment uh, to make it illegal for any type of uh, imported assault weapon coming into the country, as Hillary Clinton stated that it was. Uh, we don't need these assault weapons for duck hunting and for hunting purposes. This is uh, what we're being told. So this is. Uh, this is the propaganda being used now uh, to uh, to continue to take away more of our uh, right to keep and bear arms and to condition the American public that we don't need all of these weapons uh, because by the after all it's not uh, it's not legitimate for duck hunting and deer hunting, uh, which of course again is not what the Second Amendment was put in the Constitution for. So the attacks on our uh, our liberties. And our uh, our firearms are very uh, very very blatant right at this time. Very blatant uh, on our attacks on uh, our Second Amendment. And this House bill, a uh, thing that I've been hearing about for a long time, is very evident of some of the shenanigans going on even at the uh, state level. Uh, I want to talk a little bit to you all about uh, before we get to some calls here. 
about uh, something that's uh, been on my mind here this last week or so. Now, when I started this program uh, roughly four and a half years ago, May of uh, 1993, uh, it was mentioned to me that, um, that many of the things that I was talking about or I was going to be getting into uh, were crackpot things, were conspiracy theories, uh, what not. Basically, uh, uh, the, the, the line at that time was that anybody that says, talks like I do uh, is somehow a conspiracy theory, a conspiracy kook, and uh, this, this is not real. And we talked about uh, different things like, um, for example, black helicopters, unmarked black helicopters on this program, which there's been hundreds of thousands of eyewitness accounts of black helicopters flying over America. Unmarked, unidentifiable black helicopters. Hundreds of thousands of accounts of this, and yours truly has even seen a few of them in the last four years. Now, that was one thing. The second, one of the second things that I talked about was how dangerous it was to allow people to, to, uh, who are not identified meaning uh, wearing uh, some type of uh, uh, facial, uh, facial covering, such as a black ski mask, to come busting into your homes. This is very similar to the Inquisition and, and some of the tactics of the emperors and their minions of, of uh, many centuries back. And we talked about this, how this was dangerous, that we cannot allow people who are un uh, unidentifiable to come busting into our houses and into our homes. And we talked about this. We talked about the movement towards uh, uh, taking away our U.S. sovereignty and putting it into the hands of uh, ungodly world organizations like the World Trade Organization and the United Nations and the NATO and the World Health Organization and, and various different uh, factions on the so-called international community. We talked about all this, and we still do talk about it, but the fact is uh, we talked about all these things, and at that day, at that time, at that point in time, uh, the general philosophy that the establishment media would condition the American public to accept was that this was wild uh, conspiracy talk, and there's no, uh, no truth, no basis to this. Well, come to find out, folks, uh, that uh, they are now, in many forums, on the so-called media, uh, admitting that, mu that much of this is now a reality. They do, in fact, employ uh, officers from different levels of uh, so-called law enforcement to come busting into your house wearing ski masks. This is a fact. They're, 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 they're admitting it now. They're also admitting the fact that... Uh, they are using uh, certain uh, aircraft, unmarked aircraft, for surveillance. They're admitting this now. Keep in mind, three or four years ago, this was uh, written off as wild conspiracy talk. Okay, but now a lot of this stuff is being admitted to. At the time when I first started discussing these things, it was brought to my attention that this could not be true and that, that uh, Jeff Davis, uh, I was programmed, actually the people were programmed to think that what I was saying was some type of wild, uh, wild uh, story. And that was the line that was fed then. Now the reason why I want to talk about this, folks, is because this is a very important uh, area where the enemy is manipulating the minds of the masses. And the, the masses do not even understand how they're being manipulated around like goats. And that's what you are. You're being manipulated around like goats. There's no other way to say it. You people are, you have your thoughts and your, your minds and thoughts and opinions are shaped and controlled and you don't even know it, that this is happening to you. But the fact is, three or four years ago, the standard line was, was that we that this was conspiracy, wild conspiracy talk. Now that they're admitting it to you, what are the dumbbells and the dupes saying about this stuff now and what I was saying four years ago? Well, I'll tell you, folks, it's the simple, oh, that's okay. So what about they're doing that? So what if they're busting into people's homes with ski masks? I saw that on uh, 
McNeil Lear. I saw that on such and such, the CNN. That's okay. It's acceptable. So before, folks, I want to make this drive this home to how duped you are, the ones that you out there that don't understand how you're being manipulated like goats. You're being told one, one you're getting uh, fed one set of goods on, on one end three or four years ago, and you're falling for that. Now, through conditioning and through gradualism, you're being, you're being forced to believe that what's happening to you is acceptable. This is a very powerful, very subtle brainwashing going on of the American public, and most of you don't even know what's happening. I'm just coming out with it today. Many of you people, not probably not the ones that watch this show, but many of the people that uh, that that uh, were saying these things about me and others like me uh, are dupes, and you're being duped by a by a brainwashing mechanism that's so entrenched now, and, and 24 hours a day of propaganda being fed to you that you don't even understand what's happening to you and how your thoughts and your opinions are being shaped and molded by people you don't even know. And that's the best, that's, that's, absolute, that's the, the bottom line. You're dupes. And, 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 it's going, and, and advancing that even further, I now want to get in briefly, talk about this, um, what's going on down here at City Hall. This is a fiasco going on down here at City Hall. And I haven't heard one person yet say exactly what any of this stuff is all about. First off, folks, we have about, if I read it right, we have approximately $90 million worth of bonds that are fixing to get bucked to, to the, the uh, Travis County taxpayers tomorrow. Uh, I hope that uh, there is enough resistance in this community uh, if the elections are not rigged, uh, to vote these bonds down and, and get this debt off the, off the, keep this debt from piling up on the backs of the Travis County taxpayers. Uh, personally, I would say with the huge propaganda machine that's in place here locally, the majority of these bonds will probably pass. But beyond that, I, Jeff Davis stands against these bonds that are going to be voted on tomorrow because they are, are nothing more, they have nothing to do with the kids or the parks or the buildings or the roads. What they have to do with is debt and somebody financing these bonds, preferably the New York banking houses, and that's where this is coming from. So I'm hoping that, the, that, that uh, if the elections are not rigged, and many of us believe that they may be, uh, that these bonds, or at least part, part of these bonds, will be voted down tomorrow, and uh, and at least for now, uh, that debt will be off the backs of the Travis County taxpayer. So I encourage anybody that's watching this show, if you still vote, if you still believe in voting, to go and vote against every one of these bonds. Uh, don't don't believe the line of the uh, lying newspaper down here about it being for the kids. Uh, don't uh, don't believe this crap because everything's for the kids or for the environment or for the roads or for what it comes down to is debt and for the financiers. So vote against every one of these bonds. Now I want to talk a little bit about this annexation deal going on down here at, at City Hall. Now this this is a situation where it's much deeper and much broader than the resistance that that we're seeing. Uh, the fact is, the uh, slave masters, and that's what they are, uh, preferably like people uh, to be sucked into these huge cities. That makes people dependent upon uh, cities, their water systems, their, uh, their ele electrical systems, etc. They, they hate independence, so they basically want to get everybody hooked into these cities and get us all, uh, get everybody... Uh, uh, rung into these cities and their so-called services. Now, the annexation deal is a bad deal. Let me make that clear. It's a bad deal. It has, it has to do more with regionalism, finances, and uh, setting up this global uh, uh, world order system more than it does. Any, that's essentially what it's all about, folks. It doesn't make a difference whether you understand that or know that or believe that. That is what it's all about. Now, 
Now, if you notice, if you've been watching any of the uh, city council, uh, and I've, I can watch a little of it, but a little bit I've watched, uh, even the opposition from these neighborhood groups is not, it's not real opposition. It's, lo it's what I call loyal opposition. If you hear what they're saying, the few, uh, the few that I've watched, it's not that they don't really mind being annexed and taken over by the big beast called the city of Austin. Uh, it's they don't want to be annexed without uh, the guarantee of all the so-called services. You know, those services that they, where they take good care of you and uh, provide all of the uh, quality services. So it's loyal opposition. The fact is, uh, annexation should be rejected, should be fought against for the fact that that uh, these outside communities uh, are, do not want to be incorporated into this, this huge beast. They don't want to inquire the debt of the huge beast. And uh, many of them, I would hope, would not want to fall under the regulation of the huge beast. But generally speaking, that's not, uh, not what we're hearing from the opposition. The opposition basically is that we don't want to be annexed until you can guarantee that we get all of our services. Uh, so the annexation is a problem. And then I just heard the other day that uh, there's probably going to be more city bonds coming up sometime next fall. So more debt piling up on us. It's just a continuous onslaught of debt and bureaucracy and regulation coming at us unparalleled probably in the history of the world. That's, that's, the, that's the, the simplest way to put it. We are under attack here. And uh, unfortunately, uh, many of the... Uh, people that are in the resistance or, or on the surface in the resistance do not understand exactly uh, what, what, what's even happening with it. And the resistance is, uh, is weak. Okay, let me just get back to this thing here again. Uh, Town Lake Memorial Sunrise Service, November 23rd, 1997 in remembrance of the homeless men and women who have died on the streets of Austin. Now, I'm going to go ahead and promote this for this organization, uh, but I'm going, to, I'm going to give you my, put my spin on it as to why there's so many homeless people running around in America today. And uh, I think this quote coming up here by Thomas Jefferson will, um, will best define why I believe... Uh, uh, many people are, are homeless and becoming homeless. And I think uh, Thomas Jefferson some 175 years ago said it best uh, when, he, uh, when he made the quote that, um, we ready with it? But basically I can go ahead and read it if they're not. Okay, right there it is, folks. That is a direct quote from Thomas Jefferson. If the American people ever allow private bankers to issue their currency first by inflation and second by deflation, the people will one day wake up homeless on the continent their fathers once conquered. Now you're probably not going to hear that from this organization here, but it doesn't make any difference. Here on the Jeff Davis Show, we come out and tell you folks what's, what's really going on here and what's behind all of this. And that's it, cut and dry. If you want to know my opinion, that's why we're under attack down here. But that's okay. We're going to keep on, uh, keep on uh, telling it like it is and tell you who's doing it to you down here. Because somebody has to do it. And that's, uh, that's the function of this program and the people that are, that are involved with this program. Now, a couple of other quick things I want to just quickly talk about here. Uh, you've got these, uh, I'm going to change the name here a little bit. I'm going to start, uh, at least from my angle, I'm going to start calling them the Freedom Seminars. And uh, they have been at the, uh, the, uh, the last Sunday of every month now. I think this will be about the sixth one that, that's been there. And yours truly is one of the speakers, or at least scheduled to be one of the speakers, and many other people there that speak at these seminars. And, um, and uh, the last time uh, there was a, a pretty good turnout, and that's all I can really say about that. But uh, the last Sunday of every month, uh, there are these, uh, if you want, if there's any, if, if you seek alternative type of information, uh, these seminars are, uh, I call them, I'm going to start calling them the Freedom Seminars. I think that's more appropriate of a title. 
Uh, so anyway, folks, vote against the bonds. Tomorrow is the bond day. If you haven't already voted against them, go vote against every one of them. Every one of them. Because remember, debt is slavery. And don't let the propagandists convince you, to get, convince you that this is for the kids. Uh, if, there, if there was any, if, they, if, if, the, if the people that control this system cared about the kids, they wouldn't have slaughtered 17 of them in Waco, Texas on April uh, 19th, 1993. And speaking of Waco, Texas, February 22nd, we're scheduled to have a Waco Remembrance down here. And uh, it's, it's, it's in conjunction with the Freedom Seminars. And... Um, we have several of the uh, Branch Davidian uh, survivors scheduled to come down here, and uh, that'll be on February the 22nd of 1998. The date's not up there, but it is coming, and, uh, and uh, that should be a, a good event as far as I'm concerned. Okay, now, uh, I want to just mention a couple of hypocrisies that I've seen in the news today, or the news over the last week. And some of the uh, most ridiculous things that I have seen, uh, some of the most ridiculous em emissions of things uh, coming out of that news that, that, it, that it's absolutely incredible what they're saying. First off, I sat up there and watched Madeleine Albright and Bill Clinton, supposedly, uh, of course, they're just puppets in the world order game, in the world order business. Anybody that understands that knows that. However, for these people to sit up there on national television and, and condemn China for supposedly human rights violations, uh, for example, in Tiananmen Square and whatnot, this is, this is, this is laughable. In fact, it's, 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 it's incomprehensible that these people could be talking about human rights violations in China, in Tiananmen Square specifically, when, when just in the last 15 years, this government, from just what we know, what we've been told, has murdered 80-some uh, people in Waco, uh, snuffed out the young 14-year-old Sam Weaver in Ruby Ridge, Idaho, uh, Gordon Call, the tax, uh, the man that didn't believe in paying his taxes, uh, just, uh, just, re just on and on and on. Uh, the so-called human rights violations that this government has uh, participated in, the hypocrisy and the deception of uh, these phony leaders trying to blame, uh, trying to pin China with, uh, with these allegations is, is preposterous, to say the least. It's absolutely preposterous. And quite frankly, I think the whole China situation at this point in Taiwan and some of these things that have happened on Wall Street uh, is nothing more than a diversion to get you away of what's happening here and get you thinking the enemy or the problems in China and Taiwan where in fact the enemy's right here in the good old U.S. of A. Uh, preferably in the Washington uh, District of, Clim uh, of Criminals and the uh, banking houses of New York City. That's the enemy. So, uh, and another thing too I want to put to rest. Anybody that's, that's, that says that uh, that I, that I am privileged to come up here and, and uh, tell you all this, and this government is so loving that they allow me to do this, and they won't allow that in other countries. You're full of it, man. You're full of it. You don't know what you're talking about. This information is so prevalent now in other countries, other nations, that it got so bad in Bosnia, for example, that they literally... Uh, the anti-UN and the anti-NATO information that was being disseminated was so bad, was so much and so uh, pervasive in Bosnia that they literally went in and scrambled their communication lines. You people don't know what you're talking about. You're duped on almost every front these days. Uh, you're focused in on fashion, Marv Albert, OJ, all of this crap that they feed you. And you're and you're you're getting your rights stripped blind from you. You're getting your resources sucked off from you. And you're focused on absolute issues that they're feeding you of no significance. And you're blaming people like me for complaining about what's going on here. What hip, what hypocrites? What hypocrites you are to listen to the propagandists who are controlling and manipulating your minds, and you don't even know who they are. 
absolute hypocrites. Now with that, I want to say beyond that, everything is well here for Jeff Davis. Everything is going quite well here for now. And, um, okay, let me just mention that um, coming up here, there's the return of teledemocracy. Uh, this Friday, 8.30 p.m. on Channel 16, teledemocracy returns with my friend Greg Erickson. So any of you teledemocracy fans, uh, he is coming back as uh, this Friday, I guess that's the, what the 7th of November, something to that effect. And uh, with that, folks, I know the lines are jammed. Just stay on the lines. What we're going to do now, I'm going to run this footage of this press conference that took place Thursday of last week. And uh, now a lot of this was seen on the national news. Well, not a lot of it. About a minute and a half of it was seen on the national news. And I don't fault them for only showing a minute and a half of it because they, are, they do have limited time for these things. But what I do criticize them for is the, is the side that they want you to hear. In this, in, in this, in this uh, coverage that we got, first-hand uh, footage, you'll get all the information, or at least part of it. It's like 40 minutes, and we're going to run like 20 minutes of it. But you're going to hear the actual uh, uh, news, news, uh, news conference and different interviews with uh, different people. And... Um, and all of this. So I think that, uh, and then we'll be back for the last uh, half hour or so. Okay. Okay, folks. I want to thank the Ritters again. They, they've been a frequent guest on the program. They're doing some excellent work. And, I, and, and genuinely, I want to thank everybody that's been involved in this show, that's been doing some excellent work with this show. Linda's sitting in here. Re sit, uh, sitting out there. Uh, we're, uh, but we're, there's been some a lot of people here that have that have contributed to the show and continue to to contribute to this show. And this is what I believe puts uh, this program uh, at another level down here at ACTV. Although some it would say say differently. Okay. Now with that, let's go to this footage here, and then we'll uh, come back, take your all's calls, because I am kind of curious to know what's on your mind. I've had a lot of guests down here the last uh, three or four weeks, and we haven't had a lot of calls. So uh, if anybody's got any information on any of these uh, any of these topics that I uh, talked about earlier, uh, or um, anything new going on in the world, you know, the world order is moving right along here, folks, and it's accelerating. Uh, so, uh, if, if you got any information on any of this stuff, uh, you please, you know, here's your form. Here's your opportunity to uh, tell the the viewers of this program uh, what's coming down and what's uh, what's being planned for our children and our grandchildren. So, with that, let's go ahead and go to this footage and uh, I, stay on the lines, folks, if you can. And uh, we'll be back in about 15 minutes. And God bless you. He'll be here. Civil Affairs Officer. He'll be here. Are you guys ROT members? Yes. Okay. Is he getting a fair trial? No. Why? Uh, the law doesn't count here. Uh, Morales is a former judge, you know, to heck with any legal problem, just run these guys through. 
You know, and this is something you guys should be concerned about because you could be next. I mean, Waco, they had you back four miles. No one said He's that. getting a review. A couple of y'all complained from the standoff because you're 10 miles away. And this is the result of it. I mean, this, you know, this is a dangerous question. Have I'm you, uh, surprised at it, but it's, you know, it's still dangerous. Have you sat in the uh, courtroom at all? Not yet. We just got here today. But we've had reports from our people down here, you know, the last couple of days. How many, how many, many so-called people do you think will show up for the uh, verdict? Don't know. We've had, you know, about a dozen or so wandering around for the last week, so, you know. What does this mean if he gets a conviction? Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Is there, I, won't say. I won't say. That's, that's, I won't say. Is there still a Republican Texas movement? Are there still oh, yeah. people who oh, support yeah. him? Is there oh, still yeah. an active militant branch? I don't think we ever had an active militant branch. Uh, what was it? You know, I mean, they found him with a lot of guns and bombs and weapons. What would you call that? A well, have you seen any of these bombs they found him with? I saw a lot of the weapons they uh, confiscated. But not yesterday. the bombs. I saw pictures of gas cans, which... You don't know if they were full or empty or what? Uh, I don't... How many weapons they have up there? Four or five? Well, I seen was that old beat-up Russian that rifle. That beat-up Russian rifle and that... That little pimp that, gun uh, McClare uh, had. He had uh, well, what, what, what are y'all's options if he gets convicted? What can you do? Well, he's, uh, he'll probably run through an appeal process, but uh, there's, there's a lot of irons in the fire as far as uh, the, uh, the lawsuits going on and uh, state, federal, and uh, international uh, uh, filings that have taken place, so we'll see what happens. You know, this is basically a jurisdictional issue, and uh, I'm sure, this, well, the Supreme Court of Texas uh, has ruled that the state has no jurisdiction over the Republic of Texas. It's a separate entity. Um, according to the... Uh, Congressional record uh, in several instances, starting from 1870 and ending up at the 104th Congress in '96. Uh, this place is supposed to be a nation. Let me ask you this: Is he hurting himself by not presenting or mounting a defense of any kind? I don't think so. I mean, because if you're gonna, if you're on trial in his position, and and this is a jurisdictional issue, then if you start mounting a defense according to state laws, then you you know, then you hung yourself out to dry. Is he a dangerous guy? Is this move? <laughs> Movement no offense, but I think you're more dangerous than he is. I mean, he's, he's a general guy. Well, how do you explain the fact that Joe Rowe uh, was wounded in a hostage-taking scenario? Well, he wasn't down there. Who was it? Uh, McLaren. He was um, brought on the show, though, wasn't he? He's on the radio. Wasn't Talking he brought on the show? Um, uh, yes, but as far as what happened to Rose. You know, I wasn't there, so I can't tell you exactly what decision was made by the people that got there. Um, as I understand, they were under the impression that they weren't home, and when they got there and they were home, I mean, it, it's, you know, that's up to the people that were there. Uh, I don't know what circumstances led up to that or anything else, so. Um, Do you see them as being military targets? Yes. Do you still see them as military targets? Why? Well, if, uh, if they were your next door neighbor and they notified uh, the law enforcement or an enemy of yours, uh, every time you take a win, you might make you the nurse. Yeah, but it's a free country. Well, it's true, but still, you don't want someone spying on you all the time, do you? It's a free country. I mean, well, that's true, but I mean, would you want me watching you every time you went somewhere, taking pictures, or calling, uh, calling neighbors and having them follow you around any time you left? No, but that doesn't make you a military target. That makes you somewhat a stalker or something like that. It doesn't make you a military target. Yeah, you know, maybe so, okay. Uh, have you been talking to him during this trial? Yes, I have. What's he telling you about? Yeah, we, don't, we don't discuss trial a lot. We kind of BS and chew fat. He'll, he'll give you some of his, his feelings on it, but other than that, we just... Uh, uh, kind of a release for him. He'd call my house. We'd be asked for a while. About he was on the Jeff Davis show about two weeks ago. Pardon? Is he taking this trial here seriously? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why is he defending himself? Well, it's a jurisdictional issue, so he's, he's he's trying to bring that that situation to the forefront. That's one of the things that his lawsuits are about. And, and I think if that was to get resolved, then it would be a whole different situation. Uh, there would be a, a defense. And, and, and whether the conviction would still happen or not, uh, I mean, I don't know, but that's, that's one of the issues that has to be decided before you know, he wants to go on. You said earlier we should all be concerned. Why? Well, 
the judge here isn't paying a whole lot of attention to the law, and I think if you were on trial for anything from speeding ticket to whatever, I mean, you would want them to have to play with the same rules that you do. And in essence, what he's told, Larry and, and anyone involved with freedom of liberty, uh, you have to pay the rules because we don't. And if you don't like it, you can. But if it is to be found guilty and convicted, should there be any reason for concern? Will there be any retaliatory kind of uh, actions? I don't, I don't see any retaliatory type thing uh, in any near future. I, that would be kind of uh, kind of like shutting the gate after the horses got out, you know? Is he getting a fair shake in the media? No. Why not? Uh, in all honesty, uh, I, I think that, that all of you all are under pressure from your bosses to come up with the story. And uh, there's a fella in Austin, uh, Jeff Davis has a uh, program on the access network. Uh, uh, he's getting pretty pressure. He's sent him on the program by telephone, asked, uh, asked tough questions, uh, looked at it from an open mind, understands what's going on. Uh, there, there's a lot of forces at work in the country right now, and, and we need to be aware of it. And just, just, they're just kind of poo pooing everything about, oh, well, Clinton's bad, but so what? No, he's worse than bad. George W. is worse than bad. You know, I, I've got a business card cleared up, and the last, on the back of it, the last line is, is slavery an option? That's something that everyone needs to think about. There's a lot of things going on in this country that, that people aren't paying attention to. So why would that informant uh, testify in jail? I don't I don't know if he wanted to buy the missiles or not, but, but normally and, and the folks that I've run into that are federal informants, that's always the first thing they push on you is to come on buy some goodies, come on buy some goodies. Now, I'm a model railroader as a hobby. And I used to go to train shows. I knew it was a fellow that went around to train shows wanting to know if anybody wanted to buy truckloads for M sixteens. And I'm like, whoa. But I mean, you know, he was an informant. I mean, that's, you know, it's a usual entrapment thing. If you want to find a drug dealer, go out there and start peeling dope. So hey. you don't like them when you, they're a military target like the Rose or government? No, I, no, no. It's, it's not a matter of liking them or whatever. Um, that, that's something that the, that the government has to decide on whether they're a target or an objective or somewhere that needs to be, uh, you know, looked at, watched, whatever. You know, same as any other government. You know, I don't win the government, so I don't, you know, I have no say. What do you, what's your name? Gene Ritter. All right, any, uh, T -T. T -T. T -T. What do you want to say to McLaren has it? You drive them, guys. Y'all could be next. How so? Well, uh... And what do you mean by that? Well, a lot of freedoms are being stripped away from us in this country. And again, going back to standoff, you guys are 10 miles away. They sent out their talking head tell you what they wanted you to hear. You had no idea what was going on up there. I didn't. You know, we hear that the roads were kidnapped, and, and that's the word going around, but no one could see it. You weren't able to go up to the house and look. You know, I, as, as news media, if, if, they would treat, if they would have treated you guys when, when Nixon was in hot water, the way that you're treated now, I mean, you guys would have caused more trouble than the country's ever seen. If they would have denied you access to Nixon and what he was doing, like what they're doing until now, y'all would have started a civil war. The media would have started a civil war. So you're, are you in? Uh, yes. Where do you live? Do you live in four days? Uh -huh. <laughs> And there goes the civil affairs officer. The whole thing is, the whole thing is, like I said, it's a jurisdictional thing. It's a, uh, it's, it's a legal situation. And the word, you know, we just fell in the van and appealed here in a few minutes and has no He just went in the door? Did you understand what it's all about? He just went in the door, Gene. Okay. But a guilty verdict is that a setback to the rear cause? No, I don't think it's a uh, big thing. Uh, you know, they seem to think, you know, these fellas seem to think they can now uh, uh, get rid of the clearance. I don't know if that's the case at all. There's a lot of people involved. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of good people involved. A lot of good people involved. Active people. You know, they just went up. Where's the rest of the Republic of Texas? Where are the rest of the people? Why aren't they out 
Hello, Austin, Texas, and we are back. And I hope you enjoyed uh, part of that news conference that took part uh, took place Friday in Alpine, Texas. Let me just mention before we get started here, folks, there's some other shows down here on Access that uh, I would encourage you to watch. This is a commercialism because it's all Access. Uh, first off, uh, tomorrow at 8:30 to 11. Uh, the, on channel uh, 10, I believe. Is it 10? 10, 10, I believe. Uh, the Real Spin with Alex Jones comes on down here on uh, channel 10, 8.30 to 11. Um, and then, uh, like I say, Friday coming up here, uh, uh, starting his new se series, Teledemocracy, this Friday at 8.30 p.m., channel 16, Greg Erickson comes on. And Saturday uh, at 8 o'clock, uh, my friend Terry Liberty Parker uh, hosts his program from 8 to 10, 8 to 8.30 p.m. on uh, Channel 10 down here on uh, access, these Access Channels. These Access Channels, folks, are uh, one of the many, one of the many uh, forums that we have uh, to get some of the truth out to the public and what I can see consider to be a sea of controlled news and information. So there are some other programs out there to uh, to watch and uh, I would encourage you to uh, to check some of these other programs out. And uh, I, w I will remind you that uh, there may be some differences in uh, some of our opinions uh, as concerning certain things but the fact is we're all united to the fact that uh, uh, we're, uh, we're, we're getting sick and tired of news stories about how, what to do with your leftover chicken and uh, uh, magic and uh, how, to order a, how to get a pizza delivered to your home. These are the kind of stories that have been, were being fed uh, on a regular basis, along with the issuance of bonds and more debt and all of this kind of foolishness. So... Uh, once again, uh, vote against all the bonds if you haven't voted already. Uh, if you vote, if you still believe in voting, vote against every one of these bonds tomorrow, these debt-producing bonds. It's not for the kids, not for the roads. It's for the financiers and the parasites who will profit from the, uh, fi the financing of these bonds. Yeah, this is the, uh, these are the kind of stories we want to see right here, folks. Right here. We want the news media to, to, uh, to tell us about how many houses have been stolen from property taxes uh, here in Central Texas. We want, uh, we want stories about how uh, uh, our government, uh, our, our local law enforcement is being turned into uh, uh, military outfits. Uh, with men uh, conducting themselves with raids with black ski masks. This is the type of information we need if uh, we're going to truly remain a, uh, a free and independent people. Not the, best, not the best way to deliver a pizza or get a pizza delivered to your home. Uh, this is the kind of uh, issues of no significance, of course, that we're being fed on a regular basis. And uh, quite frankly, I'm to the point where I don't even watch it anymore. But sometimes you've got to watch it to the fact that uh, you, have to under, you have to understand what the enemy is saying and what they're doing so you can effectively counter, uh, or at least try to counter, their huge propaganda machine that they have in place. So with that, vote against the bonds if you haven't already. And um, a couple other things about Bosnia I want to talk about. Um, Bosnia, in fact, uh, if you remember... Uh, this was told uh, in 1995, December 1995, that they would, the troops would be over there for a year. And uh, now it is uh, like two and a half, uh, two years later, nearly two years later, and they're still over there. Now they're talking about extending it even further. Uh, it also appears that uh, uh, Iraq is in, uh, could be in trouble again uh, because of the fact that they are not uh, allowing those loving UN inspectors uh, supposedly to come in and uh, uh, and uh, test out their uh, their weaponry. So we it, there's a potential here again that another uh, minor skirmish in uh, Iraq could take place. 
And as far as some of the emissions that I've been hearing coming from the media, just out and out just ridiculous things. Uh, one, one story I heard the other day was that, that we need to deal with Iraq because they potentially could uh, uh, control the whole world's oil market. And this is, this is ridiculous, folks. Can you imagine uh, Saddam Hussein in Iraq uh, getting a big straw and sucking all the world's oil out of the Persian Gulf? I mean, this is the type of emissions that are coming from the, this, this propaganda machine that's in place. And it's huge and it's overwhelming. Uh, but these are some of the things that we're being fed here. And it's just, a, it's just, uh, uh, it's just amazing what's happening. Uh, one other thing as far as uh, information, uh, the, the idea that we are the only country now that can uh, uh, object to anything that, that, these, that uh, these governments are doing, it's, it's just out and out a lie. Due to the fact that uh, through the internet, through international shortwave radio, other mechanisms, alternative press, um, many, there are people, there are people across the entire planet now in every nation that are anti-New World Order on to what's going on and they're fighting and resisting uh, what's happening. So this whole business about we're, us being so privileged here in the land of the supposed free uh, that we can get up and uh, talk about this government uh, is uh, just another one of the little subtle lies that they feed you uh, to keep you deaf, dumb, and blind as to what's happening. I also want to reiterate again that I believe that they're they're purposely uh, diverting a lot of attention uh, from America's problems onto China, Taiwan, and some of these other, uh, Guatemala, and some of these other areas of the world to keep us focused off uh, the realities of what's happening right here on American soil. So, there's a lot going on, folks. A lot of propaganda at place. And uh, a lot of uh, the enemy is, uh, is advancing forward with uh, quite a bit of... Uh, uh, propaganda and uh, got different type of legislation and and whatnot. One thing I want to briefly talk about, but then we'll get to some calls. Uh, this country was founded, folks, on common law, basically meaning that you were sovereign over your own uh, your own body, your own uh, possessions, your own hon honestly acquired property, and that you were sovereign over that domain. And you basically had, could do anything you wanted to do with that, with your, with your, uh, with your honest, with your life and property, provided you didn't impose that right upon somebody else. And beyond that, the government was there to enforce that. In other words, to protect lives and property when people were being violated. This was the old common law system uh, that, that this country was founded upon. Uh, much of the uh, Republic of Texas movement, the sovereignty movements, uh, the freemen, much of the uh, uh, information, uh, much of the information that um, that were um, that uh, many of these organizations are talking about are talking about, and this is the reason why they say these courts with the uh, um, with the flags, with the um, fringes, the gold fringes. Uh, this is all talking about admiralty, admiralty law uh, versus common law, and basically what we're caught up in now is a Roman civil law system, where basically the emperors who control this system uh, impose laws, rain laws down upon us, to essentially make us all criminals, to make us criminals of the state, where there's no victim uh, except that you had, except you have violated some paper law. That the that the state has created, which makes you a criminal and subject to punishment. This is communism, but but more importantly, it goes back to the old Roman uh, civil law area that we're caught up in right now. And this, of course, comes down from the world order system and their minions uh, throughout government and, and whatnot. And uh, this is basically the difference between common law and uh, the, uh, the Roman civil law that we're caught up in. The Roman civil law, of course, creates victims, uh, creates criminals out of everybody through uh, a reign of laws, a series of laws being perpetrated where there's no victim. And this is why, uh, this, is, this, 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 talks, this, is, this is inclusive of, uh, for example, property taxes. 
here's a fellow that uh, really losing his probably losing his hundred thousand dollar home that's paid off uh, due to the fact that uh, he owes $845 of, of uh, property taxes to uh, the, count, the uh, loving Travis County. Uh, this is part of the, the economic enslavement that's uh, upon our people today. And you can see that it's from that loving uh, tax uh, assessor collector who's just a, actually just a useful idiot, uh, a minion of the system. Uh, but um, the uh, the idea that this uh, that we can lose our our, our lives, our properties, uh, and and we've lost much of our rights now due to this Roman civil law of economic and so social any justice that's going on. And uh, so anyway, with that we're gonna go. What what you need? Yeah, okay. With that we're gonna go ahead and um, try to t take some calls here. I appreciate you all folks holding all this time, and I'm curious to know what, uh, what's on your all's mind, because it's been a while since we've taken some calls down here. Just remember, folks, if you haven't already voted, uh, and if you still do vote, go down tomorrow and vote against every one of these bonds. And uh, I expect the bonds to pass. The, the, uh, the, uh, I hope I'm wrong, but the, the, the propaganda is so, so entrenched that uh, this program is not going to be able to counter the investment made in, pass, in making sure, ensuring these bonds pass, meaning the uh, disinformation, the propaganda, and the, uh, the economic investment in these bonds. With that, let's go to, go to the first uh, call tonight. You're, hey, on the, you're on the Jeff Davis Show. How you doing? Alex, Jeff. Who's that? This is Alex. Uh, Alex Jones? Yeah, you got it. Hey, listen, when you were on uh, my uh, other media program this weekend, something you said was absolutely true when you said... Alex, we've got to talk about the fact that we were saying years ago about the black helicopters and the and the militarization and the federalization of the SWAT team. And people would call us nuts, call us crazy, even though police would tell me this. We see the, we see the police cars putting the infrared vision on top of their vehicles. We see all this happening. And then I played and you played clips of the Lair News Hour, the 23rd of last month, where it openly showed black helicopters and it said yes the local police departments are now under federal control they are they are for surveillance of the population it's wonderful and it showed old ladies saying it's great and then your point of bond is very well taken uh do not vote for any of these bonds because there'll only be another bond election and another bond election all this money goes back to boston new york or yep. or germany or britain it's a local way to fight the conspiracy you got it yep. and what and, and, and plus, you know, when I went to high school, we had empty rooms uh, here in Austin, Texas. Uh, I mean, you know, that's what's going on. But the, 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 the Friday's paper, last Friday's paper in the last section said, if you don't pass the bond, the front page in that section, this little girl, Jenny or whatever yeah. her name was, we talked about on the radio. Probably had a picture of her. Yeah, it showed a picture of her, yeah. the ball, and it said, if you don't, she won't get a new baseball field because they're building a prison on that land. Oh, yeah, isn't it so loving? we got to do it for the kids, don't we? I mean, how do people allow just the same? And, you know, you're right. I went down on Halloween, and I fell into the parting atmosphere. Everybody does it. And I'm not asking people to only care about the New World Order. But for God's sake, some good self-preservation would lead us to care about losing our individual rights. You bet. Man, I, I mean, to. it's just, if people don't see it now, they're down on them. In fact, <laughs> that same Friday, there was another article, and then I'll get off, and it talks about how wonderful Boogie Nights is, you know, a movie about the porno industry, and I'm sure that's entertaining. And then below it, they had another uh, article, and it said that Richard Gere's uh, film about China and them having the rights, that it was a big flop and stupid, and it said... Who's, and it said, China's not bad. And this is what it essentially said. It said, China would not have allowed OJ to get off with their military tribunals. What's bad with that? So now you've got our paper openly in the movie section. See, this propaganda, like you say, comes real insidiously in, in entertainment. You know, people who don't, who say they don't care about news and don't have an opinion, they have opinions because they're being programmed yeah. only continually everywhere. Reduped repeatedly. Yes, it's just continual, like you say, shot for a minute, continue, yeah. continue, continue. And they don't even know that their minds are being manipulated. It, yes, it's a, it's a group psychology. And I say to people out there, 
I'm not going to say, I'm not telling you to come follow me, Jeff's not saying come follow us, but you know, we're getting a lot of people down there that open the public free seminar. And yep. A lot of people are coming in and it's, it's starting to crack uh, uh, all races, very conservative, very liberal, libertarians, you name it, very clean cut, nice people, people with nose rings, you name it, real diversity. And uh, you're not a racist, I'm not a racist. We know what's going on. Doesn't mean that we're perfect. And, you know, that's what people's argument is. Okay, well, you're not perfect, so we're not going to follow you. Well, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not Jesus Christ, and I don't think you are either. And they want to keep following this global slave system, be my guest. But, but, I mean, I saw a story today, Jeff. Well, it comes down to this. It comes down to this. I'm not even concerned anymore about people who uh, just continually uh, stay duped, and, and, and they like it. They like to be duped. It's enjoyable for A lot of people duped. won't even take three hours of their, their whole life to investigate what people like us are saying to prove us wrong. Well, They'd you know rather that? just dismiss it, go back into denial. Stick your head back in the And head. if you ask me, their, their children and their grandchildren could potentially Curse them. pay a very significant sacrifice because of this. Oh, and I, and I, also, I also want to say this, that the minions that are perpetrating this on us, uh, they're very much expendable on all of this. And that's the thing they don't understand. Yes, it's, it's these enforcers, these cannon fodder, they're going to have to lose their lives enforcing the New World Order. But the last thing I want to say is... They already have. Look at Vietnam. Look at Korea. I saw something in the news. They today. already have. Take take uh, Levi Strauss that makes Levi's jeans and, and uh, other things. <coughs> they, are, they are the original patent holders on denim. They make the best. Uh, they, they, they are popular all the world, but they are shutting down fully a third of their plants because their CEOs are patriots and are trying to keep their production here in America. They're going to have to move all their production now, uh, starting with a third of it, offshore, like the people that own Lee and, and, um, and Wrangler and all the other big producers, because, and even the news said it, that because of foreign labor. But then they said, and then the next ad was for something, everything is global, global, global. And, and, and you know what? This big climate treaty that, 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 that Gorsuch and assigned to reduce our fossil fuel consumption, it's not global. Only America has to follow it. It's a deindustrialization plan. We're what under the, attack. What they're doing is, is they're playing nation against nation. They're doing this, this nation against nation business. And I believe that's what just China and all of these diversions are right now. But anyway, it. Alex, let me move on here. Tell, well, tell us when your show's on tomorrow. Well, listen, Jeff, I appreciate the time, and, you know, we've had our differences. Tell me when your show's on tomorrow. I think we're ironing those things out. Um, tomorrow night, uh, it starts at 8.30 and uh, uh, goes up past 10, and uh, that's exposing corruption and, uh, uh, and exposing mass media together. And tonight I'm going to be on Robert Smith's show at 11. That's going to be an entertainment show that I don't think people are going to want to miss. So Jeff, well, okay, what channel is that? What channel is that? Channel 16. I'm on tomorrow night at channel 10. Okay, the one tonight at 11, 16? Yes. Uh, if, if people tune in tomorrow night at 830, I'm going to show the U.N. flag burning where you are again at the step of the south side of the Capitol. Oh, I love that. Oh, you did a damn I, 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 That made my heart, uh, set my heart uh, uh, joyous when I set that baby on fire. <laughs> well, I enjoyed burning that other one. Yes, too. sir. Well, Jeff, you take, take care, buddy. God bless you, brother. Bye. All right, next caller, you're on the air. Appreciate Alex calling in. Next caller. Yeah, Jeff. Yes, sir. I was watching Council of Foreign Relations. I taped it for 58 minutes. They didn't say anything, but they had a University of Texas professor, Walt Rostow, R-O-S-T-O-W. Uh, he said three things that alarmed me. For first, he said that the tragedy moving into the 21st century is depopulation of the planet except for Africa. And number two, he said... We need to do away with the League of Nations and the United and the United Nations. And Ted Koppel asked, did I hear you wrong or did I misinterpret it? You said we need to get rid of the League of Nations and the United Nations. And he said, yes, you know, you know. Um, Let me ask you, where did you see this? I got it on tape. It's on uh, C-SPAN. That and, could have been a very watered-down version. And he said, well, what we need now is something stronger than the U.N. Mm. Since we moved into a new world economy. Oh, really? So yeah. we need to get rid of the, the uh, current... Uh, go ahead. I'll let you go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to save that tape for you. And another thing that bothered me is, did you see that, uh, that tape on uh, those California sheriffs spraying those pepper spraying those people's eyes? No, I didn't. I Tell, us that about that. For you. Tell us about that. What, uh, well, I got, I got it on tape. I'll bring it to you. Uh, they took pepper spray, and these protesters that were uh, protesting against uh, the logging camps, Ecology protesters, 
they were holding these kids down, opening their eyes up, spraying pepper spray right into their eyes and rubbing it in with two Q-tips. And I got I got a tape over here for you. Really? Yeah, for sure. Now, it sounds loving. I, yeah, bring it to us. We'll put it on. Yeah, I think it is uh, kind of funny, man, that uh, all of a sudden that that 500 point crash happened just right when that Chinese guy showed up. I think it was organized to keep us from paying attention to what Clinton was doing. Did you yeah. see him bow down to the, the to the Chinese guy? Well, the bankers are definitely the ones manipulating that Wall Street deal. Yeah. In fact, I myself lost uh, about three thousand dollars last week. Uh, I mean, I think so, no. but but definitely it's the international bankers that are manipulating. They that. keep saying we've moved now. We've moved into a world economy. Really? Yeah. We. Yeah. Can you get us a copy of that? I got it, but I, yeah, yeah. Well, Satan 300. Man. I, I I don't even watch the uh, CFR meetings on C-SPAN anymore because it's uh, it's a stage deal. Quite well, frankly, they said it was a two-hour meeting, two hours, one hour for the public, and one hour behind closed doors. Yeah. So think, you're right. Yeah, I think the. Uh, you're yeah, right. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but he, he will. Yeah, can, you, can you hang on the line there and, and talk to one of the producers back there? Sure. What's your name? I'm Pat. You okay, know, Pat. Satan 300, remember that? The which one? Uh, I'll tell you later. Okay. That's good. You got to stay on the line, Pat. All right. So they can, uh, they can talk to you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we're virtually out of time here. Uh, let's go ahead and take another call here real quick. Hello? Hi, sir. How you doing, Jeff? Good, and you? Yeah, I'm doing fine, man. Listen, uh, this is Jim, and uh, I uh, was interested on your House Bill t uh, 2901. Can you go over that again? Okay. What Do you do you know anything about it? Uh, man, I did not hear a thing about this. This is total uh, new. Well, I've been, I've been hearing it for a while. Uh, House Bill 2901. It's by uh, Hochberg. Hoch Hochberg. Does that, that make it? Does that ring a bell? No. Okay. Is this a Texas it's, State Bill? Yeah, Texas State Bill by Hochberg, H-O-C-H-B-E-R-G, a bill to, a bill to be entitled an act okay. relating to paramilitary training organizations providing okay. a criminal penalty. Okay. Okay, right here. Let's get a copy. Let's get a close-up of it here again. Now, uh, has this passed? Well, according to us here, this act, uh, Section 2, this act takes effect September 1, 1997. The importance of the legislation and the, crowd, and the crowded condition of the calendars in both houses created an emergency and an imperative public necessity that the constitutional rule requiring bills to be read on three several days in each house is suspended. Mm -hmm. And this rule is hereby suspended. Okay. So basically, they, uh, according to this, the... Uh, so they snuck this one under, uh, under our noses. Looks like apparently they're supposed to... I don't really know that much about the state house, but apparently they're supposed to... Uh, uh, be read on three several on three several days in each house. Right. But according to the supposedly the emergency of this bill that needed to be that needed to become law. Right. Uh, that was suspended. Okay. Here, here's a copy of it right here. If we could get a close up of it. Okay. So the governor has signed it. Okay. This. Okay. Right here's it. Can we can we get a? Yeah, I see it. Right there it is. Okay. Has the governor signed this? You know, I don't know the process. Okay. I, I don't know that that I don't know the process. Uh, the way I read it, it's law. Now I could be wrong, but the way I read it, that 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 uh, takes effect. Okay. And but it I took, don't. It know. took effect September first, nineteen ninety-seven. According to what it says here, yes, sir. Uh huh. Okay. You know well, that's just another one of our rights shot to hell. Yeah. Let me just read briefly <laughs> here. Let me just read briefly here. This what this says here. Uh, it calls a paramilitary organization a means means of, of a group of three or more persons persons organized in a, on a military pattern who possess firearms, right. uh, train in the use or teach in the use of firearms. Okay. And this, uh, you know, I mean, it's so vague, it, I guess it could be yeah, that's you, extremely vague. you and your kids, you know, are out on, a, out on your 10-acre uh, 10, 10 property and you got, the, you got guns there and there's five of you and, you and four of your sons. Right. Uh, the point is, it's basically, it's just another one of these laws, I believe, that... Uh, and they may not even be enforcing it yet. They may not even be implementing it yet. Well, the thing is, Jeff, is, is that if this is true law, okay, they've uh, they've snuck it under our noses. Uh, I didn't hear about any of this in the press. Oh, you wouldn't. Uh, it's totally unconstitutional. Yeah, well, uh, of course. It destroys the Second Amendment completely. Right uh, here it is. 
and uh, I don't know if the governor has signed this or not. You know, I need to find that out exactly whether this is officially. Uh, uh, official. I wish you would, because I'm going to try to find out too. It's eight. It's H. It's House Bill. Uh, 2901. I love Mike Hansen archives. Yeah! You're ready to run. Did you get that? Look, there's an army person there. Yeah, get that. <laughs> well, here we are on 195, uh, where they've got some of the military out uh, at accidents and things. That's a, the military now work with the local law enforcement, and we're going to go try to talk to some of them without interfering with the accident scene. Military personnel out here. Uh, do you know why they were out here? I have no idea. I think one of them was uh, working on the back of the rescue vehicle. I, I assume that. Because they, uh, when they left, uh, she got in the back of the vehicle, so I guess she was riding with them, as far as I know. Well, we've been told, uh, and we just happened to run into this accident, we couldn't get our cameras out in time. We saw some military personnel, and they're gone now. You said you saw one of them at least getting on the back of the ambulance? I think one of them was working on the rescue vehicle. That's the only one I saw. So they have military personnel on the rescue vehicle? I assume so. I have no idea. Because when I, like I said, when I walked up, she was getting up in the back of it. Well, I saw that she was wearing gloves. Right, and right. That's the same thing I saw. So she I, was uh, dressed like the paramedics, except they were in blue, and she was in military. In BDUs, right. right. Uh, we're told that now that the military patrols this road. Uh, I've heard that. I've read it in the paper, so I couldn't really, couldn't really say. I don't really know. What newspaper did you read it in? Colleen Daily Herald. Colleen Daily yeah. Herald. Yeah, and I saw it on the on the news on channel. I forget what channel it was. They showed it on the news about they was going to start having the military police ride with the uh, I guess the state state trooper. With the state troopers. Yeah, I guess uh, that's that's why I understood it on the on the TV on the news. Well, thanks a lot, sir. Well, Where from? Uh, retired staff sergeant Stanley G. Casey. So, Sergeant, uh, retired. I understand. Uh, say name, sir. What's your name? Retired Staff Sergeant Stanley G. Casey. And you live out here outside Colleen. I live right down here in Creek Place Drive. And uh, you were telling us earlier that you did read in the papers that they have military now patrolling uh, this road here. Well, from what I understand, is the way the way they had in the paper and on the news that they're gonna have the military police riding along with the state trooper. That's the way I understood it. Now, as far as military patrolling in our vehicles, I don't think they are. I think they're just, like I say, just riding with the highway patrol, I guess. Just get the highway patrol and the military working together. That's exactly what they're trying to do, right. Did, right. Just to start creating a relationship. Uh, I assume so, yes. Is that what you uh, read in the newspaper? Yeah, that. And then it was also, like I said, it was on the on the news they had on one of the channels. I forget which, which one it was. You know, they try, I guess they're trying to, trying to save the soldiers, you know. If you got your soldiers out here, I mean, they, they can't do you any good in combat doing the job if they're out here laying on the side of the road. Well, but how is it, can't the state troopers, uh, how is it going to help the state troopers to have police riding along? Don't state troopers have jurisdiction over people on the roads? I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess the commander of the Fort Hood and Bell County must have come up with some kind of agreement. I don't know what. I couldn't tell you. I really don't know. Thanks a lot, sir. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Come on, baby.
How you officers doing? I've got a little cable TV show, also make documentaries, and we're doing one on the wrecks up and down here. We've heard that there's a big uh, upsurge of wrecks uh, here on this highway. Is that true? Who are we all with? Well, I've got a radio show on KJFK uh, in Austin, 98.9 FM. My name is Alex Jones, and then we also have a cable TV show. We're just curious. Uh, we hear that, that the military's been doing some patrols um, in, on some of the roads with y'all. No. Mm -mm. So the clean paper was incorrect? Well, they've been talking with the generals, but as of right now, there's no military patrol out here. They, have, they don't have the jurisdiction to work this road. So they've been talking to the generals. Uh, who's been talking to the generals? Well, our colonels, the colonel of DPS has been talking to the general out here. So the Colleen paper was incorrect saying the patrols are going on, that they're riding along with y'all? Well, that, that's not possibly in the future. That, that's not something that's occurring right now. So it's possible in the future? Yes. But it's not happening right now? No. They haven't just uh, been riding with y'all just, just to see what it might be like? Not at this point, not right now. But you're saying that there's a jurisdictional problem? Right, because uh, the military has control of the military base. This is not a military road, so all they can do is ride along and observe. They don't have any jurisdiction to enforce out here. Why would the military be wanting, uh, why would your colonel be talking to the military general and trying to find out a way to do that? What's the reason? What would the military be doing out here if they, uh, who wants it? Where's the initiative coming from? To be honest, I really couldn't tell you. Uh, just trying to find a way to, there's a lot of the wrecks out here are military. We're trying to find a way to find a meeting in there so we don't have as many wrecks involving the military out here. Don't y'all have jurisdiction over this? I mean, just put a few more DPS out here? We work this road every day, eight hours a day, 20 well, I'm out here eight hours a day. Been out here ever since lunchtime. Well, what I'm saying is if somebody does something illegal, it doesn't matter because they're in the military, they're off the base, it's your jurisdiction. Correct. But we can't stop a guy driving down the road just because he's in the military and say, hey, you can't be driving out here. Uh, the general is trying to make this off limits to all the military personnel, make them go a different route to go from Colleen to Austin or back and forth. Just to cut back on the traffic. No, basically to, to keep a lot of the military guys from being involved in accidents, but we can't, as officers, stop people unless they commit a violation of the law, and just because you're driving down the road and fatigue doesn't mean that we can stop you and say, hey, you don't have any business driving around out here, because they have just as much right to decide what you do or I do. Oh, so what you're saying is, is that they're going to put military law onto this road just for the military people? Well, no, they can't. What they're trying to do is restrict it, just like you would a business. If you had a business in Austin where, say, 30 soldiers were arrested in the last month in, in uh, less than reputable circumstances, the, the general out here at Fort Hood can place that business off limits to all military personnel. He has the right to do that. He can give them a direct order that says you cannot go there. But uh, as far as the public highway, he can't say, hey, you can't drive down this road. Was this, was this wreck right here? Yes, we saw some military personnel with the emergency vehicles. Uh, they were just assisting, just people that were coming through that stopped to assist. Oh, that was Colleen really? EMS. Oh, so Colleen EMS does have some military on board? No, sir. They had some people along that had stopped and were assisting. Oh, Colleen great. EMS, our full time paid uh, EMS person. Right. So, basically, last question, and I do appreciate y'all's time. Uh, you're a trooper. Mixed. Mixed in your styles. Thanks a lot. Um, Basically, the last question is just to go back. Right now, your colonel, who is your colonel at the DPS in this area? Dudley Thomas. Dudley for Thomas. For the state of Texas. For the state of Texas. Uh, colonel Dudley Thomas is speaking with the general. Ed? Yes, for what they're doing, they're, they're uh, trying to mediate a solution to, to lowering the number of accidents that we're responding to on this road. But this year, uh, and I, I grew up here ever since I've been a little kid, our primary accidents military personnel. That's just the way it's always been. So basically, you're tr they're trying to find a way uh, to give you all the authority to give them tickets? Or to, or to take them to jail? No, what they're trying to do is lower the number of accidents that they're involved in. But I'm asking, what's the mechanism to do that? Basically, if this is a safe road, if you drive the speed limit and you don't try to pass enough passes on and stuff, you can drive up and down this road 
at, at the maximum speed limit all day and never have a problem. But whenever you have a lot of people that are exceeding the speed limit and trying to pass in no passing zones, then it's not going to work on a two-lane roadway like this. Well, see, that's where I'm confused, uh, officer, is, is that you say you can't pull them over for just being in fatigue. I understand that, but if they're breaking the law, you can pull them over. Yes, sir. And, and if they're driving recklessly, you can take them to jail. So why does the military even even need to be involved? Where is the problem? Uh, that's between our boss and their boss. That's, that's something that, that they're working on to try to lower down the number of accidents that we're going to out here. So from what you've heard, it's basically coming from the military to the state uh, level to the colonel. They would like to have their people out here? I think it's it's a mediation of the both. You know, uh, our colonel wants to see the number of accidents that occur out here lowered, and the commanding general of Fort Hood is is visibly upset because he has a lot of soldiers getting injured and killed in accidents on this road, in particular. You know, it's not just this road, but in this road in particular, we've had a lot of accidents this year. High volume, low speed, a lot of hills. People think they can go fast. Well. Really, you can't. I mean, you can drive the speed limit. 70 miles an hour is plenty. You know, that, that's plenty fast out here. And uh, oh, that's what I'm saying. You can get on this road 70 miles an hour and drive from here to I-35 without having a problem. But when you exceed 70 and you start passing in no passing zones, then you're going to have a problem. The 70 is the max. Not every vehicle out here drives 70 miles an hour. You may have to pass them that's going 60. Old truck or something. Well, I've just been trying to find out exactly where the idea came from exactly? Like, who who made the initial contact with DPS or did DPS contact the military? I, I don't know on that, because all we do is work out here. You know, if they, if, uh, if they call me up tonight and tell me I need to work on 190 tomorrow, I'll go work on 190. But uh, this has been my primary responsibility for the last uh, two years is to work this highway. And, and you've uh, seen the number of accidents increase? No, not necessarily. Uh, we, we've had an, an extraordinary number of fatalities this year, but we're working about the same volume of accidents that we've always worked out here. But it's just now they're looking for ways to cut down on the accidents. Yes. What's this right here? I'm just the curious. Mic, just like yours. Same thing that so basically, exactly the same right there. So basically, y'all just hit a button and it starts recording. That's right. What's it hooked to? Uh, video set up in the car. Oh, that's fantastic. What's that for? Like interviews and right after accidents and things? Um. It covers a lot of stuff, basically. These are the good DWIs, mics for cheap, too. I've got yeah, the same well, on Yeah, well, on the DWIs and stuff like that, we can do a standardized sobriety test on the roadside out, you know, in the public and let a jury actually... Were you told this by any of your officers? Or? No, sir. Where'd you hear about it? Just speculation from other soldiers, sir. Oh, other soldiers heard about it? Yes, sir. So you just got a word of mouth from others? Right, sir. Basically, uh, why were you told that this was going to be done? Because 195 is a, a dangerous place to be driving. But why can't the DPS just do it? Why can't the, the normal authorities do it? I couldn't answer on that, sir. When did you first hear about this? Monday. Monday. But you haven't gotten any word yet from your superiors. No, and, uh, have you all heard any of the information that uh, we read in the Colleen paper last week about MPs riding with the Department of Public Safety? the state police out on the roads? I really haven't heard much because I've been out of town. You haven't heard about it? I really haven't heard anything. Have you heard about it, sir? No, sir. Not really. Not really? Have you heard anything? <laughs> I've heard about the accident myself, but I really haven't heard about the uh, full details regarding the uh, peace riding along with the uh, police. The full deal? To, uh, the you haven't heard about the full details. Have you heard anything? Uh, yes, I have heard about the MPs riding along with the uh, local uh, law enforcement agencies. Uh, just to identify any soldiers that may be committing any uh, traffic violations. Uh, but my only question is this. <laughs> when y'all are out on the roads, y'all do not drive with impunity. A, a local police officer uh, of any town that you're in can still give you a ticket, even though you're in uniform, correct? Oh, absolutely. They can give you a ticket, but the EMPs are just there to identify the soldiers, and uh, once those soldiers have been identified, they will have to uh, respond and... Uh, uh, let the chain of command know why they were committing any uh, traffic violations, especially on that road. Not, but, not but think about my question, and I understand what you're saying, sir. My question is this. If police can already treat a person who's in the military exactly the way they treat anybody else, and you're under the same laws as you, as you yourself said when you're out on the road, 
then why do you think they want MPs riding out outside the base all around the highways? Well, I really don't know the uh, full details and the full uh, uh, purpose behind it. Uh, you would have to ask somebody that actually implements the system, and I'm not the uh, subject matter expert on laws around here. But basically you have heard that they have MPs riding uh, around? Somewhat, yes. And that's outside the base? Outside the base, Well, yes. again, well, here we are at a World War II remnant. Now, they actually use these through Korea and even some in Vietnam, I'm told, but this is a German-designed half-track used by the U.S. government. We just copied their design. The Germans invented the half -track. Start over. It was Secretary of Defense William Cohen around three months ago in Army Times came out and said that he never thought he would envision a time when armored personnel carriers would need to patrol the streets of America. Well, this is a 1939 design or earlier. This is actually a German design of hat track, which was adapted by the U.S. military and in service right through Korea and even into early Vietnam. U.S. half-track, a early design of a armored personnel carrier, mainly to suppress urban areas, mainly in the Warsaw Ghetto. The Germans uh, really employed these. They're excellent, again, for urban control and smashing through resistance, uh, generally to tyranny. This is a tool of a government that has a people that are acting up. But hey, don't worry. Your local law enforcement just isn't getting weapons of this nature. They're getting the new models, the six-wheel and more armored personnel carriers. Let's go show you a heavy armored personnel carrier, uh, which most uh, big city police departments are getting with their help from the military. They're, they're giving them free, and then the military drops by and trains with them. So I hope you all enjoy the trend here in modern America today. Again, for suppressing the general population. And uh, Secretary of Defense William Cohen is very excited. Uh, he says that, uh, again, a quote from him is, he would never envision a day when these would have to be used in downtown cities. Well, he says now that day has come. It's not a question of if, but when terrorism's coming. Hmm, I wonder who will engage in the terrorism to declare a police state. Didn't Hitler do that same thing in 1933 by burning the Reichstag? I'd all repeat that at nauseum, but the only people that stand to gain by terrorism is the commanding controllers, the big government people. They need you to be in fear. Problem, reaction, solution. The Hegelian principle. Now, lest you think that the U.S. military and the federal government only give local law enforcement or only loan local law enforcement hand-me-downs, old helicopters, old armored personnel carriers, no, no, no. Here is the Abrams M1A battle tank out here at Fort Hood, the very base back in 1993, April 19th, where they took these beasts, several of them, at least three from the data I've got. We have video of these babies driving around the house and ramming into it along with Bradley fighting vehicles. So they give them the best, only the best against U.S. citizens. The Abrams M1A frontline battle tank, the world's premier battle tank. Thank you, Bill Clinton. I just can't say that enough. Loving Bill Clinton cares about you. So again, lest you think that they just get the hand-me-downs to uh, stave off these dangerous citizenry. Oh no, they get the best. 
Now let's go look at some of the other armor personnel carriers that the uh, military's been handing out like candy, and then we'll show you some footage of other armor personnel carriers that your local law enforcement has. Armor personnel carrier. This one, of course, is Soviet. They don't have very many U.S. armor personnel carriers out here, the newer models that our local law enforcement are getting free of charge. They're just trying to help. Remember that. Just trying to help on our highways now with our local police. Mm, that's really a great thing. Somebody told me that's called a police state. And of course, here's another armor personnel carrier. Take good care of you. This is from another foreign country. Where it's no big deal to see armor personnel carriers going down the street to keep you safe. Well, why does America have to be like all the other third world nations? Oh, I forgot. President Clinton. Okay. The PT-76 was developed by the Russians, but it was also produced in China and many other countries. Piece of garbage. But see, they don't have to worry about that anymore. They just get given all our plans and all our diagrams by President Clinton. It's a fantastic policy. Again, helping the commies. Again, helping the uh, socialists, and communists, and command and controllers. That's Bill Clinton's middle name. Patrolling your streets. It's already begun. We have nothing against the military, but this is out of control. Please, just to set the record straight, this is very important. The military just doesn't give local law enforcement and loan local law enforcement hand-me-downs and old type vehicles. They give them the newest, the Abrams M1A frontline battle tank came directly from Fort Hood, directly from the base we're standing on right now, and three of them were delivered to the FBI HRT hostage rescue teams, and they did use them on day 51 in 1993, the fiery conflagration Waco, Texas. So again, they'll use anything on the public. Again, the Abrams M1A battle tank. Mike, give another shot of that loving, loving piece of law enforcement equipment. I thought it was peace officers, peacekeepers. No, it's loving law enforcement. One of their newest tools because they, they care about the citizens so much. Here we have the M113A2 armored personnel care APC. If we don't stand up, if we don't speak out, we're going to have to get used to this. Already, again, in the Colleen area, you've seen the DPS officers, you've seen the military people, the MPs, refusing to talk about it. But they would admit this is going on. Military police patrolling outside the base on major highways with the DPS. The DPS has a giant investigation arm, an intelligence arm, left over from the Cold War. Now they have nothing to do except watch us, the citizens. The information gathering network is up is the information gathering network is up and going full steam ahead. Military police. We're not getting answers. Here we have the M61 main battle tank before the Abrams. Not good enough to go up against a wooden structure filled with men, women, and children that the FBI had falsified warrants and said they had a speed lab and, and illegal firearms. The BATF said they had an AK-47 with upper and lower receiver. There is, there is no upper and lower receiver. It's a gas-powered uh, semi-automatic weapon. The Mac 90s is, is actually what they had. But it didn't matter. They needed to demonize some people, test the American public, and this just wasn't good enough. <laughs> they had to have the Abrams. Well, here we are at the Texas Department of Public Safety, right off Runberg on 35, and uh, we're going to go back and show you some armored personnel carriers now. What's going on with DPS and the military? I really want to find out. The DPS was established in 1936 by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It's really a federal police force. They have their own intelligence gathering network on subversives. I hope you all feel safe, guys. They sure felt safe at Waco. Go turn off. Oh, there it is! 
We're told there's even more. Come on, Mike, let's get a close up of it. Beautiful, beautiful day. A beautiful day for an armored personnel carrier. Now, Steve Lane saw them bringing in two six wheeled ones earlier this month, but uh, they were not brought here. They did say DPS on the side. Let's try to go around the back and see if there's others, see if we can find. Well, well, well. There we have it, an armored personnel carrier. Now that's a four-wheeled one. Steve Lane saw some six-wheeled ones, the big heavy type, coming in. There they have a nice communication tower so they can get their federal orders. Very, very interesting. I feel safer already. I thought it's illegal to have military operations and to work with the military, but hell, the Constitution, old document. Now China, that's a country that's got a Constitution. They've got plenty of those. In fact, they used them in Tiananmen Square, didn't they? Well, again, just to repeat, Steve Lane and Mike Hansen saw... God damn it. Well, I'm a little bit disappointed. We came around the back, and we can only show you the two armored personnel carriers and not the two large six-wheeled ones, as if those are not scary enough, something out of the movie Red Dawn. And I'll almost guarantee you that is not a U.S.-made armored, armored personnel carrier. I'll have to look in a Jane's uh, weapons dictionary to find out, but unbelievable. So there you have it, keeping you safe, armored personnel carrier, uh, just to make sure that everybody's good and that everybody's loving. And the two large six-wheel black ones that are roughly twice that size or twice that length, um, those are not here. Uh, again, some of my good friends, uh, Mike and Steve, Steve Lane, saw them being brought in, but we got here too late. We have no idea where the two super powerful slave machines have been taken. Let's try to get a shot, Mike, of the other one so we can get both of them in the picture. Look at over there and over there. Tell them what we're doing. We're having to do that because we're having to get it over the fence. Oh, that's all right. Well, sorry about this camera work. The camera's blurring, looking between the fence, but there's the back end of the one we showed you earlier. And then there's the other loving machinery over there, number 59. We don't know, again, where the large black six wheeled ones are that say DPS SWAT on the side. We just saw them being offloaded, or actually Mike and Steve did, so. Well, we're trying to get you this shot right now. It's kind of hard to do. We're having to hold the camera up over the fence, but uh, because it was blurring looking through the fence, but these are just two of them. We've seen two others being delivered to, again, six-wheeled, uh, even larger armored personnel carriers, and of course, Austin, APD has them, and Travis has them, and everybody has them. Just, God, they love us. Hope you enjoy it. What are they going to use these for? They only used them in Waco. What are they going to use these for? What are they going to use these for? They only used them in Waco. What was the result of that? Saving the 17 little children? What's the terminology? What's being taught to our law enforcement? Why are they not peace officers anymore? Unbelievable. Well, this is the Department of Public Safety, if you can call it that. And uh, they're militarizing and they're doing traffic stops, routine traffic stops in the hill country now with the police. Mike, Mike, you can get on your tiptoes and shoot through there. A lot of love, guys. A lot of love. I should add, this camera works a little bad because we're here uh, getting it through the fence. Standing on the edge of about a six inch ledge. I got it. Uh, I got it like that too a while ago. Come on, let's come out here. He is, you can't zoom in all the way, but you can zoom in most of it. I know, I do. Mike, get, 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 get. Let's go down this way so we can get the back of it. Climb back up. Just come down here and hand it to me. <laughs> what we do for these idiots. <laughs> And it's green too. What are they trying to hide from? 
that, where are them other blackers? I don't know what they did with the blackers. They might have took them over to the other place, you think? They were just delivering, they were new, they were delivering them here. Say DPS? Uh, uh, no, it said SWAT on it. Where'd you see them taking them to? Here. We were coming down the highway and I almost swerved off the damn road. I saw it. I said, what the hell? And I swerved and see was behind me and he saw it too. Hey, he can talk about that tonight. He calls him his story. Verify. I can't see nothing from here. Hold on, let me see that. Yeah. Hold that up just towards the wrong doing. Can you see anything? Okay. Go ahead, make sure I turn it off. Tune right here for more classics on this channel here, Hanson Archives. But to fund this station, I'm offering if you send us $25, uh, we'll send you a signed copy of Bohemia Grove Cult of Conspiracy. It was forwarded by Tex Mars that just recently passed away. Also, Alex Jones has a chapter in here. And you know that's good. There's us in our younger days. But on the address that you see, send us $25 and we will send you a signed copy or give us a call at 830-672-3089 and uh, you can put it on a credit card. We'll send it right out. But that's what we need to help fund this channel, folks. So. Help us get all the classics uploaded to YouTube. We got hundreds and hundreds of old Alex Jones and Jeff Davis and a bunch of other patriots that we need to upload. About 25 year old tapes. All right, that's it. All yeah, right, right. Right. who wants to lead? Let Gene go. Go ahead. Yes, sir. All right. God bless the Republic.